morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you are listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration and juice. It is November the 8th, 2021, and today the topic is The Harvest is Plenty. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend. Um, mine went fine oh, overall. I mean, I guess the one unique thing was I got some time to fellowship with my mother and sister at the church that they um, attend. Me and my family went yesterday, and um, it was nice. It was nice. Um, basically, my sister had invited us uh just, I mean, I guess just to have our own family and friends day or something like that. And I almost didn't go um, because I'm supposed to go down there later on this week for my aunt's funeral that I mentioned to you all the other day. Um, but I decided to just go ahead, um, you know, push through, get on up and go. So uh, I'm glad we did as well. Um Y'all may notice that I am recording a little later than usual. Uh, Again, I ended up going deeper in my own um, study that I did this morning. Um, To be honest, when I did wake up, I was super tired. Um, I kept having moments of like almost going back to sleep. But, um, you know, thank God I pushed through and I'm here to give you all some juice this morning. Um, yeah, I hope that it encourages you and inspires you on today. Now, speaking of the weekend, I mean, I guess it it goes without saying, I I know that there's other, several others that have talked about, you know, what took place in Texas, um, the so-called music festival. Um, I mean, those of y'all, I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about (laughs) without me name dropping and whatnot. Um, but regardless, um, yeah, I mean, taking in that information over, you know, from like eyewitness testimonies to what the people saw and felt while they were there, um, you know, obviously listening to uh, some of the ministers that I follow, like, for example, Marcus Rogers, speak on it um, as well. Um, you know, I, there's plenty out there in reference to the festival itself. And I mean, again, those that have the eyes and ears to hear and see it, I hope that you guys hear and see. Um, there's plenty, plenty of questions to ask. You know, um, just looking at the footage alone, I mean, yes, symbolism and all that. Again, you know, other platforms have gone in on that topic. Um, All I would say is, hey, man, ask questions. You know what I'm saying? For me, what stood out the most um, outside of like the symbolism and all the stuff that the, the other people were talking about was like the amount of people there like there were so many people right and aren't we still in this so-called COVID right um again hey not trying to drop no conspiracy x y and z all I'm saying is let's ask questions why why are these people allowed to you know do so much gathering and whatnot but uh, you know but churches are still filling you know those that are gathering (laughs) you know um i mean no judgment whatever you know i'm saying uh without me even saying like what what's taking place here but i think it's really clear like you know the difference i mean you see the kids in the schools being separated and you see you know people being forced to wear put masks on their kids and all this but then people can go to a whole festival and just be switched together and stuff so much that they, you know, they feel like they can't breathe. And that's not even just, again, the, I mean, yeah, it's a testament to the amount of people, but obviously, again, other things are going on as well. Um, 
And again, those people that were there can say, tell you their testimony better than I could even try to repeat to you. Um, but yeah, you just find it interesting. I'm just saying we should ask questions and, um, and everything like that because it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Um, you know, the different double standards and stuff that's going on and the things that we don't, we don't question it though. And we should, in my humble opinion. But regardless of that, so yeah, the amount of people was just just vast. Like so many, so many people there. Then young people, right? So future generations, uh, which is an ongoing topic right now as well. So much coming against the youth. So much coming against uh, their minds and, and everything right now. Um, again, whether people want to be aware of it or not um i think those again that see and hear they see and hear it um on in many different levels but you know um yeah yeah i know um i don't know the gentleman's name um i did share his testimony on our pages though so if that's something you all want to see and hear by all means check it out um you know, I know he was saying that his life was pretty much changed after this, which is good. You know, um, I think that's a good thing. I, what I hope and pray is that he truly gets the the mentorship and the discipleship that he needs to draw near to God in this season. Um, you know, especially because he was able to, you know, witness something and, and technically survive something. And so hopefully, you know, uh, his testimony will continue to touch many. It already has. Um, however, you know, obviously he's probably have to do a lot of soul searching within himself as well. Like y'all know that I'm a big advocate for, you know, getting into the word for yourself and, um, you know, doing your own studying and whatnot. However, um, this is where that talk Saturday comes in, which is so interesting. Like, and I'm not this smart, man. Like, how how was I to know anything about this festival? Like, I'm not even no fan to follow. And I had no idea about that festival going on at all. Um, but the fact that this conversation about, you know, leaders and elders and, and overseers and whatnot was conversation on, you know, on Saturday. And then, boom, here we are. Um seeing that there's quite a need right because if which i mean i know the gentleman I, I watched some videos of him he went live again i want to say after the video that i saw and um he had some more people on his page to to share their you know experience as well to show that he wasn't the only one that felt and saw the things that he felt and saw um and so with thought that that vast amount of people that was there and experienced and, and saw those things and, and um again experienced those things they're gonna need some some assistance man they're gonna need some some help they're gonna need some you know you know some discipleship especially if they they are questioning everything spiritually um they're gonna be needing to to get some type of um mentor or something like that that can help them um, uh, make some sense or understand the word of God because they might, I mean, they might go to the Bible for themselves and I hope that they do. Um, but, you know, at some point they are going to need uh, just a little assistance, you know what I'm saying? Just someone there to, you know, hold them accountable and, and all of that. Um, and, you know, this is why it's important for us to fellowship. It's why it's important for us to, you know, come together and everything as well. But, Regardless of that, y'all, I guess I say all this to say that, yeah, my, my study this morning was a little bit about everything. Yes, I did kind of look up um, some things centered around, like, again, the symbolism and whatnot. Um, I don't necessarily feel lit even. I mean, y'all y'all can look for yourselves, man. In the Bible, there are some um, antichrist um gods or whatever that people worshipped in those days and I would say still in these days that they're worshipping whether they know it or not um and I would say hey ask those questions like when you're when you're reading 
the word, right? And you see those gods or whatever being referred to. Look and see what they, they were about. Like, look, you know, um, some was human sacrifice, child sacrifice, things of those nature. And then, hey, if the shoe fits, man, it, like, it, because <laughs> again, I can see a lot of that going on. That's what people, f from what I'm understanding, you know, um, what the people felt when they were there, as well, again, it's like what, you know, ministers are, are saying. People are really, you know, believing or feeling as if this was a sacrificial moment, like something where the particular artist perhaps sacrificed the people that was there. Hey, that that's on a deeper level um, or whatever. I mean, again, if you have the eyes and ears to see in here, then I hope that you see in here. Um, but again, you have to go deeper about that. And I don't know when you have to, you know, your faith and spirit or whatnot has to be able to receive that information. But regardless of all that, because we know there's evil, um, regardless of all that, the harvest is plenty, right? Because e again, even if just that, that situation, right? So many people was there. And if they all experienced the same thing and they survived and they, and they're looking at life differently and whatnot, that means that that's. It's a whole lot of people that can be, you know, uh, building closer relationships to God. So what are we to do, right? Um, you know, if that was you, right, if you were there, for example, and, um, you know, maybe you're hearing the sound of my voice today, or maybe you, you know, read the Bible, or maybe you listen to somebody else, whatever the case is. I came across 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. It says, and we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from as you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. So, yeah, I mean, I believe that those that, uh, again, they, they witness these things or whatever, um, this, this is where they are and this is what we, you know, thank God for. Uh, but hey, regardless of if you see and hear what happened with that, or if you're just in your life, right, and you heard someone share the gospel message, or hey, maybe you listen to the sound of my voice today and you, um, are receiving this, then hey, we thank God for you as well that you are receiving this knowing that hey it's not miracle right it's not anybody else or just my personal whatever this is the word of god that is speaking to you um on today uh let me see another verse i came across this morning was matthew 9 and 13 it says go and learn what this means i desire mercy and not sacrifice for i came not to call the righteous but sinners um, again, y'all can go deeper with this whole conversation about sacrifice and human sacrifice. I mean, I ended up reading an article on karm.org and it was all about, you know, why did Jesus, why was Jesus sacrifice, you know, accepted, but not any other form of human sacrifice. Cause I mean, far as I've seen, I, I you know, that I can say off the, off the top of my head, you know, um, God didn't require any other form of human sacrifice. Um, and in, in, in this, it's saying here that uh, he desires mercy and not sacrifice. You know, at some point, you know, the constant sacrifices or whatnot it was, didn't suffice for him. Um, you know, and again, you have to go deeper about that. You know, I mean, it's in there, but hey, you might just think I'm talking today. So by all means, go deeper and, and look into that yourself. Um but yeah, so any other like human sacrificing another human or even some other human sacrificing themselves or whatever the case is, uh, Jesus did it one for all. And um, yeah, so there's no comparison, you know. Um, but hey, again, y'all can go deeper with that. There's a whole article about it on karm.org. That's C-A-R-M dot org. And, um, yeah, check it out. Check it out. Go deeper. Go deeper. Now, let me see. I got another one here. Uh, Matthew 24 and 36. But concerning that day and hour, no 
one knows not even the angels of heaven nor the son but the father only so yeah i mean you know right now we're in a time where people are like it's the last days and i know people when they hear that then they're like oh people have been saying that forever and yeah you know far as i know and as far as i've been on earth and can recollect <laughs> you know i can say that yeah i have heard that for a long time now i will say though there's something definitely unique going on now that than what i've ever witnessed in my life thus far um however you know regardless of if you know god's gonna come now right or if he's gonna come a few years after now or tomorrow or whatever the case is what we need to be doing right is getting ready for this harvest um let me go ahead and just share this next um verse with you all it's matthew 24 and 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So, yeah, instead of worrying about when it is, right, and worrying about all that, why don't we do what we're supposed to be doing and spread the gospel? Um, that's what I'm receiving today. Like, uh, the, you know, uh, and and don't get me wrong, like, <laughs> it's interesting because I saw somebody post recently and somebody, I, you know, I respect, you know what I mean? Um, but they had something to say about, um, you know, I guess the America First thing, and I guess they just want to talk about conservatives or whatnot. But regardless of that, right, what I saw, again, based on the situation this weekend, there's a lot of harvesting that can be done right here in the U.S. Um, you know, I know that there's missionaries and whatnot that they go to all these different countries. And I'm not saying nothing against that. That's great. If you felt led, if God is leading you to go minister to, you know, the other nations and whatnot, I mean, hey, the gospel got to be spread by all means. You know what I'm saying? However, there is plenty that can be done right here as well. And so, um we we need to you know get on this in my humble opinion <laughs> um you know the word here says luke 10 and 2 and he said to them the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest i mean there we go um there we go I mean, there's nothing else to really say about that. We can see that all around us. Um, you know, yes, there is something you can do. Whoever you are listening to the sound of my voice today, I've shared numerous times about, you know, business endeavors that people are doing, you know, um, just just ministries and all kinds of things that people are doing to, to share the gospel. Um, you know, and hey, before we, you know, we, we there's a lot of critiques of people that are doing these things. But at the end of the day, um, if you aren't doing something for the kingdom, then, I mean, honestly, you have no right to speak on nobody else's ministry, in my humble opinion. Now, that's just me. That ain't Bible. <laughs> that's just miracle right there. <laughs> um, Second Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance again yeah i see a lot of us um believers i guess you know or maybe i say so-called however <laughs> believers are, are you know like oh but why is god taking so long like when is he going to x y and z like when is he going to redeem us or all these different things and it's like hey you know at the end of the day you know it took time for you to come to god right so it's time for me you know i got a whole book about it the cultivation period man you know it took, it took time for me to you know build my relationship with god as it did others and whatnot too and he doesn't wish any of us to perish so you know let's not be worried again about time and all that you know um if nothing else let the time motivate you to, to do something you know um you know, that's it. I'm going to keep going. Luke 15 and 7. It says, just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. There you go again, man. Um, that, I guess that's how important, you know, this is. I know that people want to go it's so funny like people use the verses to like back up whatever they want to believe or whatever but then they ain't out here talking about the gospel and out here spreading the message like 
you know, the, the Bible is used so conveniently, right? <laughs> um, but regardless, man, hey, um, <laughs> got a little sidetracked there. My apologies. I'm just saying that, you know, um, there's rejoicing happening over one. So, again, even if we think about what happened over this weekend, um, you know, again, I did see one guy's testimony. I would say pretty much his full testimony. I haven't seen many others um, outside of the people that he had on this platform. But, you know, even if it was just him that got that revelation and that um, understanding um, and everything like that, then, hey, you know, uh, heaven is rejoicing over him. And, again, there was many more there. So I would think that there was many more that are experiencing it and, um you know, uh, have their journey that they're going on or embarking in based on what they experienced, uh, over the weekend. So, um, and you know, each of their lives are important to God as well. So yeah, again, just something to think about y'all as we, uh, you know, go forward. Uh, one more verse, uh, before I get into the Bible verse of the day. So that verse is Matthew 18 and 19 or I believe that's what it is. If not, it could be Matthew 22 or it could be Matthew 11. I can't, I'm not sure. Um, but it's in the go deeper section, whatever it is in go deeper section, take a look at it. But um, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. So yeah, man. Um, like we said here, you know, the, uh, the Harvey is, is plenty. Um, you know, there's plenty to be done, plenty in our own, country you know plenty in our own neighborhoods um and everything like that so hey start where you are um and see what the lord do um but yeah that's the juice y'all that's the juice for today now uh, the bible verse of today is isaiah 40 and 8 it says the gl- the grass withereth the flower fadeth but the word of our god shall stand forever friends I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow at the Lord's will. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Miracle Sims. And you already know that your girl is now an author. And my very first publication is none other than a creation inspired by the juice. That's right, friends. You can go on Amazon.com and find the juice 30-day Bible study journal. And this, friends, I hope and pray will help you create your own Bible study experience similar to the one that your girl here shares with you every day here on God's Sex and Love.